and welcome to episode 10 of Blockchain Bytes. I'm Gotham Paul from NZ Blockchain Forums, and today we're going to be talking with Jeremy Rees, who is um, the founder uh, of 46 South, and this is the world's southernmost Cardano stake pool, which is running on renewable energy and supporting financial and geographic decentralization. So we're going to go into that as well. But before we go into that, Jeremy, um, for the benefit of um, all the people who are listening and who are not familiar with Cardano, please explain to us what, what exactly it is, who is behind it, and what utility or benefits uh, really does it offer? Cool. Thank you, uh, Gotham. Um, I mean, uh, Cardano, it's one of the many blockchains um, that are out there, but it's a really important one. Um, and that's why I'm... I'm I'm a firm believer in it, a big part of it. Um, it. It provides a lot of utility, um, and it really it's providing the foundation for that utility. Um, it's a well-researched, well-peer-reviewed, um, quite an academic approach to the blockchain. Um, and, and that seems to get a bit of grief in some communities around how slow that development might be or what that might mean for... Um, uh, how people can get into it, that it's very complex. But really, I feel quite comfortable in that space because if we're talking about financial products, if we're talking about any kind of very complex products like this, you do want it well thought out. You do want it um, uh, well considered. Absolutely. Mm. And, and so really, I probably can't give Cardano enough justice in what I say um, because there is so much in there. Um, and so there's a really good website, Essential Cardano, that gives you some really good Cardano 101, some really good fundamentals of what is it, why is it even called Cardano, where does this come from? Um, but a big part of it is just like a lot of those, a lot of blockchains is around decentralization, providing a platform to be able to, to develop new tools, to be able to provide ways of managing, managing data, managing financial data, managing ways of interacting in a decentralized manner. And that's that's the big thing. That's what all blockchain is about. And, and it's a principle of what Cardano is trying to do. Decentralized networks, decentralized um, uh, the computing network, decentralized governance, decentralized um, approach to how things are happening. And it makes it much bigger than any one person. So Charles Hoskinson, he's well known for Cardano. He's very vocal in it, and that's great. Hmm. But it is bigger than him. It is the blockchain is more than him because the whole point is not to be any one centralized figure. It is decentralized. Yeah. Hmm. And but for the for the audience, I mean, what would you say is the biggest benefit? Yeah. So that, yeah, the biggest benefit is is that peer review nature. It is careful. It is considered. It is well researched. So. There's been quite a few cases of um, in recent last few months of chains that have oh, yeah. <laughs> fallen over um, in the nicest way possible. To say that uh, Cardano isn't susceptible to that. Got to be careful with what you say, but given the the robust nature of what's there, it is it is careful. It is considered. There is not a panicked rush to do things. Yeah. It is quite academic, um, and so I think that is the big benefit of it. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for that. So now, tell us about 46 South. You know, what exactly are you offering the Cardano community? Um, and, and how and when did you start it and why? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, 46 South, uh, the name, it's just the, it's the, uh, the name of the state pool that, that I've got running here in, in Invercargill. Mm -hmm. And in Invercargill, New Zealand, for those uh, maybe listening from across the world. And and Vicargill is at 46 degrees south, hence 46 degree, 46 south. Um, so nothing too complex there. I thought it was very clever. Um, but 46 south, it's just one of the many stake pools that are in Cardano. And we're part of that is, is the, um, the minting of blocks. Again, the central Cardano gives you lots more detail about how that happens. But with people delegating to my pool, um, you don't lose control of your ADA, you don't lose control of your funds. If you delegate to the pool, then my pool has a chance to mint a block. We then get rewards, and that's a, those rewards go back to the delegators. That's all around 
being decentralized. It is part of the big network. So I think there's about 3,000 stake pools at the moment. Um, not all are at the critical mass of having enough delegation to be able to mint blocks all the time. Um, but really, my pool, it was something I wanted to do. I wanted to be part of the network. Uh, previously, I had an Ethereum mining rig, and I quite enjoyed being able to be able to be part of the network, to be part of the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, the Cardano method of being part of it is via a state pool. There's a lot of other technical ways of doing it, but I can be part of the network. And so my my pool is bare metal. I've got servers here in Invercargill that it's not a cloud-based thing. No one can come and turn it off. Um, uh, and that's part of that is also the spatial decentralization that you used and you mentioned in the introduction that my pool being in Invercargill in this far mm -hmm. south of New Zealand is a far cry from America or Europe or anywhere else that it's quite happily around the world. Um, mm -hmm. And so we've got a handful of pools in New Zealand. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've been quite happy to be able to be part of it. Okay. okay. And I mean, with regards to sort of blockchain, there's been massive media sort of coverage, mainly in the negative about mm. the sustainable aspect of the use of blockchain, Bitcoin, mining, and so on. How, um, you know, you claim to have a very, a pretty low carbon footprint um, and an interesting story around the energy use. Uh, so tell us more about that. Yeah, um, so no, and I think that's probably a, a, a big point about Cardano is that it's proof of stake. It isn't a proof of work such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. Obviously the merge is about to happen for Ethereum, yeah. but it is a proof of stake. And that leads to a very low energy, um, inherent energy in any of the blocks, but inherent energy in the network that's that's um, processing these transactions. Mm -hmm. um, and so my my servers, they're running at about, about 100 watts. That's a, a light bulb, maybe not an LED light bulb, but you know, it was one of the incandescent light bulbs back in the day. That's all that my network is doing. And even then at 3,000 pools, it's not a particularly high energy consumption compared to country worth amounts of power and behind the Bitcoin network. Yes. Yeah. And that's got the Bitcoin and you know proof of work has got its place. Proof of stake is very energy efficient. And being in New Zealand, being in the South Island of New Zealand, we're 100% renewable energy. We're wind, we're solar. Um, a little bit of solar, but mainly hydro. It's all renewable energy. So any blocks that are minted via my pool are renewable. They are, the, the energy is minor. Um, and it, at such a low energy consumption, it's a very low carbon footprint. The carbon footprint of New Zealand, of South Island's power is very, very low in the first place. Yeah. Other, other pools that might be running in other countries, they have a higher footprint but even then it's still quite quite achievable to plant trees offset and have a carbon neutral blockchain one of the things i wanted to the, the next question that i'd like to go on and ask you about is sort of you know what kind of response have you been getting um from anyone that wants to take their cardano ada with you and yeah so that's that's a good question and it, it is a it's difficult um to get a response because it is very decentralized you don't necessarily know who any of your delegators are. Um, I mean, active on Twitter, trying to be active in more different um, uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to, be, trying to be able to engage with your delegators. Um, and a lot of delegators, like anyone, they're looking for rewards. They're looking for something for them. And so stake pools offer, well, offer that part of the network is this principle of rewards that you get out of it. As a comparatively small pool at the moment, the rewards that people perceive that they'll get from my pool, they don't seem to see much value in it, that it's too low. So they'll go off to the bigger ones. Right. That's part of how the network's set up and there's talk about. Um, but there's also the ability for people to engage beyond just the rewards that they get and start thinking about, well, what, what is the pool doing? What is there more that the pool does? Is it just a mechanism to validate blocks or are there good things that the pool is doing? And that's where my pool, I'm, I'm part of a um, climate neutral Cardano group where we are trying to make sure that we quantify the carbon footprint of the network, mm -hmm. but also then extend that and go, well, 
let's offset that. Let's plant some trees. And so we've started a project now partnering with um, a NGO in Madagascar and looking to, well, we are supporting them now to reforest, to re do some reforestation and viticulture to provide. Um, and so we're providing funds directly to this NGO and mounting trees. Hmm. And that's where we want to be able to engage with delegators who want to do more than just get rewards for their um, data that they're staking. And, and this is for those climate conscious operators. There'll also be those that aren't too worried about where it goes, delegate away. And we want to be able to track them as well, that hmm. there is no discrimination on what you're doing and how you do it, but we want everyone to be engaged and really if anything, you've got the choice. If you've got two pools that are giving you the same rewards, one's going to do better with it. Why wouldn't you choose that? What, what percentage of your customers would you say are actually outside of New Zealand? Or is it still mainly concentrated here? Um, well, I guess your yeah, customer might be an interesting way of saying it. But, yeah, they uh, never thought of them like that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. Um, and, I mean, yeah, there's, there are a few. But, actually, I have no idea because the decentralized nature of it is I only have addresses that are delegated to them. If people own up to who their address is and what they are, mm. I'll know where they are. But that's where a stake pool is. You've got relays. You've got a bit more of a physical presence that um, you know, people can associate me with my pool and they can see that. But beyond that, you can be reasonably anonymous in it. Um, mm. You know, traffic from the website, a few things like that. You get the idea that there's actually quite a lot of American in Europe. There's a little bit into Asia, but I think there's still there is still a lot of work around the blockchains around the world and making it truly worldwide. Um, and that's where it shouldn't be centralized to America or Europe or anything like that. Blockchain should be able to be all around the world, and that's where I'm quite happy to be part of it here in little old Invercargill, 50,000 people, and we can still be part of it. So, yeah. <laughs> what actually, what got you interested in doing this in the first place? I mean, how does the financial, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. how does it actually work from a financial model point of view? So, I mean, for me, I've got a bit of hardware um, and I haven't gone out and bought brand new servers. I don't need to. The, the, the specifications for them are pretty moderate. So I've been able to reuse existing hardware or buy secondhand hardware and it works perfectly fine. So we're not needing to go out and do thousands and thousands of dollars of hardware. Um, same with the power usage. It's only 100 watts, maybe 120 watts. It's not too onerous. So the overhead for the pool is not particularly high. Mm -hmm. Others will host on cloud-based servers, services. And those are quite expensive to be running those virtual um, servers. Uh, but for me, it is quite affordable. It is quite a small pool, so I'm not getting huge rewards. But that means I can still be part of the network and contribute even if I'm not minting blocks. Hmm. Ultimately, the more people that delegate, the more mint blocks that I'm minting, the more that will go to these NCO projects, to these bigger world impact projects that my pool can do more than just sit quietly in the corner that yeah. we can have a real world tangible impact, that there'll be trees that are planted as a result of my pool and my contribution to the network. So that's it. Mm. And in terms of growth or you know future, where do you see it going? I mean, you just sort of started to touch on that with the fact that more trees will be planted, but do you have a big vision plan at the moment or is it still slow and steady? Yep. No, and so yes, we've got a a, a big plan around this. I mean, tree planting is not the next, you know, you plant them tomorrow but actually there's 50 years worth of growth. There's, there is a long, long path to these things. And that's where the blockchain shouldn't be around for the next five or 10 years. It should be in the next 50, 100, 200 years. It needs to be able to go that long. Um, my day job as a civil engineer, I deal with infrastructure that has been around for 100 years and I'm going to put it back in the ground and it's going to be there for another 100 years. And so... We, we do need to look at these very long horizons. What is this thing going to be in the future? Um, mm. uh, and, and that's where we can have a tangible impact, a tangible um, presence as a result of these projects that they're not necessarily Cardano, but the Cardano network lets us receive rewards and put them to good use. Um, mm. I can hold them in my hand and save them up, or we can put them to good use. And that's, that's a pretty, it's a, 
good positive impact that Cardano can have. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Jeremy. It's been a very insightful look at uh, sort of a different part of the uh, sort of the, the, the blockchain um, industry and sector um, compared to our previous stuff, uh, and it's been very, very useful. Thank you so much, and I do wish you all the best. And well done, and good luck with it. Very good. Thank you, and uh, yeah, appreciate the time. Thank you.